Cambridge City Council will now be in session. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Connell. Evancho. Here. Loffman. Here. Leonard. Here. Marlin. Here. McMillan. Here. Wolverton. Here. <clears throat> I make a motion we dispense with the reading of the minutes and place on file. Tone it down, Jack. Have a second, uh, Mr. Wolverton. I second that motion. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same side of that motion is granted. Uh, mayor's report. Mayor Horton. No matter what, I make a motion we replace this clock. <laughs> because I've been looking at that for weeks and months, and it's not getting any better. If I could remember to put that. If we're falling out, we're never going to figure it out. Well, hang on, folks. Tonight we got a lot going on. Um, normally it's a little busy this time of year, but uh, it's real busy. So I'm going to go down through the list best I can. And under the mayor's portion, I do have two very important groups. They're all important. Everyone's important. But I have two groups already scheduled, and there's two more that's going to come under the audience. And I think Council President, we've talked about that. At least someone has. I don't know. Anyhow, we're going to start out with the paper in front of it. I think, Councilman, you'll re recognize it's a little more than normal. <clears throat> Number one, Police Chief Mark Delancey requests the following. A, accept $500 donation from Cambridge Area Chamber of Commerce, Guernsey Noble Council, Officer K-9 Prisoner. B, accept $1,050 from Lloyd's Towing. C, appropriate $2,541 to vehicle maintenance. D, apply for a high law enforcement body armor grant through the Ohio Turner General's office. E, appropriate 20,000 reimbursement from the city, Cambridge City Schools for school resource officer. And F, appropriate 3,000 reimbursement from the Canton K-9 Association for Officer K-9 Prisoner Medical. Of course, all those things will be spelled out, I'm sure, in committee. Do you want to do that? I want to get me all the way through? Keep reading? Okay. We're all going to the same <laughs> Okay, good enough. Two, request that Kim Conrath say pro property code maintenance to appropriate 20000 to services by contract and 13537 and 10 cents to demolition. I don't want to take all the good stuff out of that, but there's that's a good one, isn't it, Kim? <laughs> Three, safety director Rocky Hill requests the following items. A, Appropriate 6032 from public lands to USDA loan to public lands equipment. B, approval of a negotiated contract between the City of Cambridge and the ASME Local 2316. Number four, City Engineer Jeff McConaughey requests permission to A, appropriate $13,250 to PEP to continue streets and services by contract. B, enter into pre-annexation agreement with David and Kathy Milligan. C, advertise for bids and enter into contract for 2019 continuous street improvement projects. D, enter into agreement with Strausser Construction for microsurfacing and crack sealing of various streets using the state purchasing contract. E, advertise for bids and enter into contract for 2019 CIPP lining project. F, advertise for bids and enter into contract for the Cambridge water treatment plant for roof replacement. And I know that's been needed to be handled for quite a while. Okay, all those will uh, be referred to the Finance Committee. Thank you, Council President. Real quickly, sometimes I put a lot more in this category. I'm going to try to cool it a little bit because we have other time. But I do want to open up with, and I, some of the folks from ODOT are here already, but I do want to open up on how great the VIDOC looks and the partnership and the focus of the engineering division and ODOT. And, and I think it's safe to say all of us, when you ride through there, it's, it's warming to see something like that because for most of our lives, that's not the way that's looked. 
and I want to give a hand to all those that have something to do. Yeah. Um, and maybe, I don't know if tonight's tonight, but sooner or later there might be some lights on the bridge at some point. Were they wiring up today? Okay, I, ever since, as long as I can remember, the wire, the wire is no fault of anybody in particular. Otherwise, the vandals took the little light bulbs out and broke a few things. The birds moved in. We looked at it, you know, so. But anyhow, great to see that done. Clark Street ongoing. Thanks for everyone's patience. Not too much fussing for the most part. And it's been pretty hard to work, but again, moving through it. And it's the beginning of a long haul, but we're starting well. So with that said, I have... Uh, officials tonight. I'm going to let Jeff come up, our engineer, introduce some ODOT officials. Uh, there's been some changes that's been brought to my attention, and after I started hearing the first phases of those changes, I thought, time out. It's best it comes from those that know. So, with that said, Jeff. Well, there's uh, been some change in the uh, plans for the Southgate Bridge. So, uh, we have Ty Thompson and Curtis Zygan with um, ODOT District 5 here to explain the changes here. Um, first, th uh, thanks to Jeff and the mayor for, for having us come out tonight to, to talk to you about the project. I guess the mayor used the term timeout and that's kind of indicative of this, this project right now. Uh, we're, we're going to be starting construction here in, in the next few days, uh, but that's that's not the case. Um, the the issue, um, I guess, came up during the construction phase uh, with our contractor, and um, Jeff and the mayor asked that we come and, and kind of explain uh, some of the issues, concerns uh, that we've been talking to the contractor here for the past, oh, I'd say probably the past four to six weeks on the project. Um, first thing, I, we, I gave you a handout here to, to kind of explain, uh, first to explain what the project was. So we have a firm understanding of what the project was and then I'll go into what the concerns are uh, that we've had uh, as we've worked through some issues with the contractor. Um, but I guess before I get started, the, I want to make sure everyone understands the bridge is safe. The bridge is not something that we're concerned about closing because of, uh, you know, having people go across or anything like that. But that's, that's not the issue at all. Uh, we're fully confident in, in the bridge being uh, in the condition that it is to continue to service traffic here for the, for the foreseeable future. Uh, but that's not to say there aren't some issues we want to address with the bridge and we wanted to, do, to address with the project. but. Uh, from concerns with the contractor, we're not able to do that at the time. So uh, the first first thing I want to do, like I said, is, is kind of go over what the project was. So we understand what it was that we were intending to do with the project. Um, first, the first picture uh, I, ha I gave to you uh, has, has three different labels on it. Um, it labels the different parts of the bridge. So there's the piers of the bridge. So those are just like the concrete legs um, under, uh, you know, underneath the bridge. You don't see them from the top, but you get down below and those are pretty high piers. So when I refer to the piers, that's, I wanted to let you know that's what I'm referring to. Um, the superstructure are, are the, the steel members. The, as you see in the picture, they're, they're painted blue in this picture. Um, steel girders or, or the superstructure. Uh, both of those elements are in very good shape. They're, um, they're rated very well. Uh, we inspect the bridge annually. Um, so those, those aren't really the issue with the structure. The structure is, is what you see on top, the deck, the, the hat of the bridge, I guess, um, the, the surface that you drive on. On top, there, you see a little bit of potholing, but down below is where you see much more potholing. That's where our concerns were. So the, the project was really to replace the deck uh, on the bridge. And we were, we were going to do some minor things to the steel members, um, but more, more importantly, it was the deck that was the issue causing us to do the project. And with that, we were going to replace the lights and we were going to put up some fencing and, and replace the sidewalk and things like that. But really, the project was for the, was for the bridge deck. Um, 
like I said, about four to six weeks ago, the the contractor came to us and and said, you know, the the way ODOT puts together plans is we, we put together, this is what we want the project to happen, this is what we want the work to be done, those sort of things, but we don't dictate the methods. We don't dictate what equipment the contractor uses. We don't dictate, uh, we typically don't dictate uh, what methods are going to do the work in. Uh, the contractor came to us and said, we are concerned once we start removing the deck that the bridge would become unstable. Uh, or that they would have to incur additional costs to make it stable. And um, if you flip to the second page there, the bridge, as we all know, the bridge is curved. So there's some curves in the structure. And there's two ways you can do that. You can have curved beams, uh, which this does not, or you can kind of dogleg the beams, which is what, is, which is what here is, is on this bridge. And their concerns were once they started to take apart the bridge, once they got all their equipment on there, the bridge at, at some point would become unstable. Um, and it was at these points where I've, where I've circled them. These, these aren't the greatest pictures, but trust me, there's, there's a little bit of dog leg to these, to these steel beams. Um, that they weren't comfortable without additional shoring. And when I say shoring, I guess what I mean is they were going to build, or they proposed to build additional piers from the ground up and to to uh, shore up the bridge. And I guess a picture of what I'm showing you is on is on the third page, um, where you see uh, this isn't this isn't the uh, bridge out here in Cambridge. This is just another example of. Uh, they were going to build temporary or proposed to build temporary shoring so that the bridge was stable during during the demolition, which is a very costly um, endeavor. And at that point, that's when uh, ODOT kind of you know let's let's step back for a second. If we're concerned about demoing the bridge and the additional cost, uh, we should look at relook at the scope of the work as to what we're going to do. Um, so that's that's what we've done at this point. We've we've um, the contractor has in, incurred some costs. Uh, we're working through them with with some analysis, but we're going to step back and do our own analysis to see what options we have. With can we do a deck replacement, or are we talking about having to do a replacement of a, of a much larger scale? And at that point, I, I couldn't tell you what um, you know what that may be. Uh, it, it, you know, worst case scenario, it's a total replacement of the bridge, uh, but we hope it doesn't get to that. Obviously, that's a much more expensive option. That's a much more uh, timely option. So we want to take our take our time to make sure uh, we've exhausted all the options that we can uh, to to fix the bridge deck and not have to incur additional costs and to do it in a safe manner. Um, I've thrown a lot of information at you. I don't know if this is the appropriate time to take any questions. Yeah. Here's, uh, you just need to know, you just told us what the game plan, why to change the things. Right. When's it going to take place? When's it going to end? Right. And ensure and, and the people are safe. Uh, right. There, there's some things right now that we're working through the contractor to do some, I would say, smaller repairs. Patches in the deck. Uh, improve, um, adjustments to some of the joints that are there. Most of that work is for rideability issues, so that you got a smooth, so that there's a smooth ride. Um, we're going to step back, and the analysis is probably going to take, I would say, a six to eight months. So after the contractors completed this patching work, this small work, that's good. That's it. That's what the end of their work is going to be. Um, I know there was some work we had talked about with Jeff about doing some steps, um, I guess, on the south side of the bridge. Uh, we're still looking to see if the contractor can do that work uh, since it's not really related to the bridge and, and any future projects. But we would, we would stop, uh, after we get the patching done, um, we would stop their work and they would be finished. Uh, we'd take time to do the analysis. And right now, we're looking at probably coming back I'll, I'll give it in the next five years to do a project on the bridge, whether that's a deck replacement, whether that's replacing the deck and the superstructure, or whether that's a total replacement. We don't know yet, but either either any of those three options we want to do in the next 
I would say five years. Um, part of it is understanding what it, what it is that we want to do, what is it that we can do in a cost-effective manner and a safe in a safe manner. But we also want to be cognizant of the other projects in the city, the Clark Street uh, project that's going to go on. I want to make sure that's all done before we tackle this before we tackle this structure. So that's one thing I may agree with. Yeah. I'll be the first. Um, if, if you, in your analysis, you find something is, uh, is more immediate, you'll be back soon. Yes, we've we've done the analysis. Say, is there an immediate <coughs> issue? We've we've done that as part of as part of this project, and and no, we don't feel that there's any immediate, you know, danger or anything of that nature. We would we would. Have been very conservative in that in that vein, and and you know communicated that if you know right no it the bridge like I said is safe um, it's there's continuing to be uh, issues to deal with that's the reason for the project but nothing that you know we would we would be concerned about having folks walk across it travel across it trucks go across it that sort of thing that no it's perfectly fine for that operation. Uh, yeah, what's the uh, what's the timeline for just the repairs that are going to take place? Is there a certain month? Yeah, we want to get probably want to, we want to get them done this. I'll say this construction season. Um, they're you know they're much more smaller in nature. I mean, we're talking you know where this was months at a time. You know, I would say maybe a week or two weeks at a time to where we got a lot more options to work with the city on. You know, if we want to avoid festivals or or busy times things like that we we got some options to work on that but you guys haven't set a time yet no we no because we're still coming to an agreement as to what okay. the contractor is going to do okay. um, i would say probably in the next two weeks we will know we will know and i can communicate that timeline more effective you know much more than just saying this construction season so anybody else have any questions <clears throat> thank you for coming okay the yep, thank you. You have our information down there at the bottom if you guys have any other questions or anything. Yeah, appreciate it very much. Thank, thank you. Guys. I think coming from them uh, kind of gives you an idea there has been some changes on some stuff. I mean, with our downtown groups and stuff like that, there was some major rescheduling going on. So this may actually help mitigate some of that. So. Uh, Safety is the number one thing, though. I think they agree with that. Uh, Council President, I, I, I actually erred in my typing. There were so many things getting typed today. One of them, they're all important, but this one here, I want to request, and this is from my office, request to discuss entering into contract for purchase of property. So if I could add that to the mix. We'll send that to a committee as a whole. Okay, and next up, I've asked Kim Conrath from Property Code to come in and give us an update on anything from fires to clean up to just updates in general and available for any questions. Good evening. Nice to see you all. We'll start with the fires because we've had several of those over the last few months, um, and I'll just run down the ones that I'm dealing with now. You can ask me questions whenever. Um, the Brenton Road property, which was a total loss, I met with that owner today. We finally received a, a sizable insurance um, deposit. They actually have plans to demolish that property and hopefully build a new one. There will need to be a variance from the Zoning and Planning Commission, but they've spoke with the engineer. They're getting plans ready. Um, they're going to proceed with the demolition just shortly and then they'll go through the variance process so they can rebuild a new house which would be great for everybody and, and a nice asset in that neighborhood I think. Um, Clark Street the one that happened not too long before that that's a situation which is roped off cordoned off still now that's a situation where the lady had passed away that owned the house it went to her son those papers were destroyed in the fire it had never actually transferred we have he as the owner has made a deal um, 
with another party within the city there we've checked with the judges there is a way to get that done in a more timely manner than open probate which there was nothing to the estate so and now that the house is gone there's absolutely nothing i spoke with the prospective owner today who checked with the attorney and that is in process but that goes to court um, it's called a confirmation of transfer it's a shortened version of actually um, taking care of that and once that happens they will strike a deal that um, the new owner will dispose of everything in the proper manner in exchange for having the deed to that property so we've been working on that since then um, Foster Avenue um, was a smaller fire there is a deposit forthcoming from the insurance company there and then we just had a one yesterday morning on North 7th Street which is minor in nature not something that I would deal with as far as the insurance company comes luckily it wasn't um, that much destruction bad enough as it was but the owner has been in contact with safety director Hill I'll move on to the spring cleanup at this point. Again, Cambridge Township, Madison, and Jefferson Township are um, working with us. We share the tire trailer, we share ads, work together that way. That will be April 26th and 27th, eight to five on Friday, eight to <coughs> noon on Saturday at each of the prospective sites. They have their own dumpsters as we do. The tire trailer is at our city garage. As in the past, you can dispose of four tires for free, a dollar a tire after that, a dollar if it has a rim, two dollars for a tractor tire. We do check ID on those, and you can come as many times as you want. Um, we can take everything but flammable objects, of course. Um, we cannot take refrigerators, air conditioners, um, heavy building materials, or shingles. We can take TVs, furniture, computers, all the other stuff. Um, we are working with community service again. They've been real helpful in the last couple years, and Jack now is um, helping to supervise and, and assist um, John Rayburn with the community service oversight on some different things. So we're trying to reach out into the community. Um, Magistrate Liston has been helpful in giving us some new ideas about utilizing community service, so it costs us a little bit less. Um, with up with rising costs, which has helped. So in the last two well the last two um, cleanups we've had um, community service has helped and so that's looking forward to again this year and hopefully that week we will do some pickup I don't know exactly um, what those plans will be yet but if there is a senior citizen a handicapped person out there that cannot get rid of their items we're hopeful that those can be picked up <coughs> like we've done in the past um, that year and they're also going to provide workers for us again that day they provided almost all the workers in the fall for us so I'm hopeful that they can help us again at the spring cleanup um, as I mentioned Jack's been helping with that he started a couple weeks ago and he's gonna help supervise we're gonna try to utilize them for some mowing also which will be starting in a couple weeks and everybody needs to keep in mind that eight inches is the limit and then you are in violation after that so um, We've got two other contract mowers that we use, and this year we're trying to utilize community service also. Hopefully that will work out so we don't have to go into the summer help, which each year becomes less and less. Um, we continue to work with the land bank. Um, that has recently sold a property and received three more. One of those was a fire burnt property that happened on 6th Street quite a while ago. We've already tested that for asbestos. We got the title to that on Friday and um, the contractor was notified and we'll be giving their 10 day notification. So within the next three weeks, because that is business um, day identifications, uh, notifications, um, that property will be coming down and then two in the county we're working on one in Byesville one in Senecaville will be coming down shortly um, been working with Kim Hot um, regarding the 7th Street commercial property that is falling down during each storm um, she's working on obtaining grant money there was quite a difference in the first bids that we put out almost more than doubled from the smallest to the largest so we're we are rebidding that project giving a little bit more time we had a lot of interest in people bidding but we were hoping that the property could be down within 30 days after bidding and I think that shortened the number of bids lessened the number of bids that we had come in so we're going to extend the demolition timeline to 90 days but we're putting it out to bid immediately so probably those will be in within the next 10 days we're hoping to get some new bids 
or if they say the same, we'll go with the lesser bid. She still, though, needs to, um, we're trying to explore all avenues for what the difference is gonna be from the grant money. And there's not a lot out there. They keep taking away those, um, that project money that's happened in other cities. So we're kind of at a loss, but we'll figure it out. But they are on top of it. In the meantime, it's, it's cordoned off, it's safe. It's, you know, people aren't, Unless you're walking through the rubble, you're going to be fine. So, <laughs> and anybody have any questions? Did I forget anything? <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. <clears throat> I think, in a nutshell, we've got a lot going. Again, the grass mowing, get them lawnmowers fired up, oil checked, and blade sharpened, and uh, be ready to go. I like <coughs> where we're sitting at this point. I do want to thank the council members that's been involved, and Jack, again, giving your private time. Uh, like what I've seen going out there. Council President, um, that contains my phase of stuff. Again, we have some stuff in the audience portion, but that's it here. Uh, anything for the mayor tonight? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll go on to uh, communications. Yes, I have uh, just a couple. One from the auditor where she is requesting uh, an appropriation to the water replacement fund from the unappropriated water replacement fund. Motion to refer to finance committee. No. I'll second the motion. All in favor of the motion, say the Bible say aye. 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 Those same sign, that motion's granted. Next. A monthly report from February from municipal court. Mr. Motion to accept and place on file. Mr. Cotton. Second. We're there. That's fine. Last night I had to mess it up, right? <laughs> Second the motion. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion is being That's it. Okay. We'll move on to our reports and committees. Report of Finance Committee, April the 1st, we recommend that the following appropriations be approved. $27,333.33 to insurance reimbursement. Appropriate $2,800 to fire equipment. Any questions of the committee on that report? Next. Report of Finance Committee, April the 1st, we recommend that council authorize the fire department to apply for a State of Ohio EMS grant. Any questions of the committee on that report? Report of Finance Committee, April the 1st, we recommend that Council authorize the Mayor to enter into an agreement with the Cambridge City Band for the 2019 season. Said contract shall be for $4,000 payable from the general fund. Any questions of the committee on that report? Next, please. That's it. Okay, we'll go to uh, unfinished business. Anybody, anything under unfinished? Then we'll go to the audience portion. Uh, if anybody wishes to speak, you may approach the microphone, state your name and your address, and uh, you'll, you'll be given five minutes. And we'll, we'll Hello, everybody. It's very, very nice to be back with you. Thanks for inviting me to come back. Um, as the audience portion, I wanted to... Give me your name and address. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm Carol Wilcox-Jones. I'm director of Salt Fork Arts and Crafts Festival. That's why I'm here. I live in Yukon Court at 52 Payden Drive, Yukon Court. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, when we met last time, I told you a little bit as an update about the Salt Fork Arts and Crafts Festival. Very exciting. I'm very happy to be a part of it. It's going along very well. I came back tonight because we had a little something, not a little something, a very special something in addition to producing the annual Salt Fork Arts and Crafts Festival. Um, that happens, as you know, in the park in August every year. Well, this is our 50th anniversary celebration, and that kudos to all those whose shoulders we stand upon. We decided as a Blue Ribbon Committee we should do something special for our 50th anniversary to return to the community. Uh, we formed this Blue Ribbon Committee, and this gentleman standing beside beside me, Mr. Bob Jennings, was on that committee. One of the things that popped up to us that seemed most appropriate would be a give back to Cambridge. We decided after we looked at many projects that we wanted to do something in the park because that's where we have been our home, you know, for 50 years. Okay, there's not even a whiff, a sign that we've ever been there. So we said, okay, we'll start with that thought. Maybe we should put a sign. And then it grew and blossomed. And now here's what it looks like. 
we decided we wanted to build an improved entrance on Edgeworth Avenue, across from the parking lot, a pedestrian entrance that would be attractive. We would improve the safety there. We began to work on that idea. Mr. Jennings developed a design. We've taken it to the Parks Board. They're all excited about it. I think I shared this little picture with some of you the last time that I was here. This is just a picture of this particular rendition that Mr. Jennings drew up and then painted. He's also an artist. Nice. So this is what we would like to project for the Cambridge City Park. We are so excited about this. Uh, I've been putting up a tent and some landscaping to make it look really sharp, you know, and whatever. But here we go. We have a chance to do something a little more permanent. It would be a sign both that is in keeping of what you just put up now on the bridge. It will have beautiful decorative wrought iron. Thank you. Uh, it's a stone, as you can see, a stone wall entrance. It's ADA compliant. <coughs> it would add seating for the public. It would add safety because we're going to repurpose those old lamps that y'all took down from Wheeling Avenue. Um, we've already... That's sweet. <laughs> That's sweet. We already have an agreement to have those repurposed. They'll be blasted. Um, and then painted. And now we are here because we're hoping, as we said in the beginning of our first dialogue in 2017 with the, with the board, with the City Parks Board, we wanted to partner with Cambridge City and Cambridge City Parks. We've done the design work. We've tried to begin to announce it to the community. We hope you will become a partner with us. We didn't intend to pay for everything, <laughs> but um, we're hoping y'all will help us. But we're willing to fundraise and bring our part to bear. We have a, a wonderful event coming up. Our <coughs> annual fundraising event is April 25. I call it the Festival Bash. And if we do really well on our <coughs> fundraising, we will have some good support for this. So if y'all would like to have that beautiful entrance, which I think I've, I've I've spoken about a good bit because I'm so ecstatically happy about how handsome it is, Mr. Jennings, thank you. Um, then we would like to be able to find a way to make this happen. Um, I was checking around, and by the way, Jingos, I found this Nature Works grant possibility for you all. So maybe we could find a way to combine with that. Or if you have funds that you could contribute, we're willing to do our part, but we can't produce the festival and this and uh, by ourselves. So I hope you will find it of something of interest for you. I know it will be a permanently attractive event and, and a, a lasting application to what's in the park. The park is so handsome. And by the way, I have a big thank you to Marty Matthews and Mike. They go around and trim all the low branches, fill up the potholes. They try to make it nice for the festival, and I appreciate that very, very much. And so this would just be an enhancement project. So this is what I wanted to present. Mr. Jennings, do you want to add anything to that? <laughs> I think it is. I mean, we, have a, we do have a wonderful city park, and I think this will really show it off. And plus, I don't know whether you mentioned, but we're also proposing possibly the lights. Did you say it, the pathways? The pathways, we have 10 lights from downtown, and we're, propo we're proposing to put them along the pathway, say like 90 feet apart, and then people can walk through the park at night and be safe. So that's one of the things we're doing, but uh, it's, it, I'll tell you what, be thankful you got somebody like her because she has really worked hard on this project. And I think it'll be, it definitely will be a mass up to, the, to Cambridge. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any questions about that? Oh, the cost. Y'all yeah, we'll want to know the cost. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. I have initial estimates. I can tell you who's involved. I asked for bids. I'm not a, I'm a neophyte at this, okay? I'm a beginner, but I did cons uh, consult with several people. Um, we have an estimate from Jack Warren Construction for the wall, for the stone, <coughs> preparation of the site, the apron. By the way, I said it was ADA compliant. You can see that you can roll right from the street in. We'll treat the water that has been a problem for that entrance. 
um, that was from Jack Warren Construction, about 16,000 is what an initial estimate was. Then I went to Friesinger's, which is uh, wrought iron people uh, in Zanesville, but they had done your woodlawn sign there at the cemetery, so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll ask him. And um, Mike LaPlante is who I spoke with. He came down, he's looked at our project, he's given me an estimate of about 15 to 16,000 as well. And then I spoke to some electricians. <laughs> I've just been shaking the bushes, as my daddy used to say, shake the bushes, get the answers, put it together. Um, so I've talked <sighs> with Al Neff on electric. We can do a photo cell uh, so that it's dusk to dawn. We have those two lamps to be repurposed. I've talked with, um, oh golly, what's his name? Oh, that nice. Oh, Art Rogovan. Um, and he's going to help us with the blasting and the preparation there. So we're trying to do as much outreach and in-kind as we can. But I would appreciate it if we pull this project together. I want to present it at the Festival Bash and see if our, if our fundraising efforts are successful. I would like to have this for the 50th anniversary. Wouldn't that be cool? Fabulous. And for those people who are able to support us, we are prepared to put a beautiful plaque on the wall that says thank you to these generous sponsors. So that's it for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yes. That is there. Uh, uh, anybody else? else? Okay. Anybody else out of the audience for you? Uh, hi, my name is Kevin Hewen. Uh, I live at 6997 Cubbison Road. Uh, Cumberland, Ohio. I'm here with the Weeblos from Cub Scout Troop 547. Uh, we had a uh, pin that we're trying to earn. We had to speak with some leaders in the community. So I figured the best way would just to come up here and see how you guys do. So uh, glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, they're a little, little shy. They don't want to come up here. So <laughs> had me come up. Uh, um, come on, boys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Tell us our names. Yeah, Uh we have Mason here, we have Dawson, Aiden, and then Corbin. Uh, you guys here. Yeah, man. Give my hand for working hard. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You guys are welcome to come back anytime. Yeah. Okay, uh, nothing else out of the audience portion. We'll move on to new business. Mr. Conway. Uh, thank you. Uh, for new business, uh, I thought it would be appropriate to uh, look into the possibility for city employees gifting time, uh, sick time, to one another. There's currently uh, not an ordinance on city record uh, that would allow uh, employees to do that. So I thought. Uh, Unfortunately, I won't be here to uh, discuss it, but I think that would be something that would at least be worth looking into to benefit uh, the employees here. Thank you. Do um, you want to make that in the form of a motion? I would like to, 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 send it to uh, legislative. Yeah, I'd like to make that motion to send it to legislative. Go there. Go it probably should go to finance because it will have financial. All right, so you want to amend your motion to send it to finance? I do. Thank you. I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Both same side. And that will go to finance committee. Thank you. <laughs> one more one more straw in the stack. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Pack a lunch. Um, anything else that a new business? It will go to ordinances and resolutions. First one is a resolution authorizing participation in the ODOT Road Salt con contracts awarded for 2019. I make a motion we suspend. Mr. Walton. I second that motion. Roll call on the suspension, please. Leonard. Yes. Marlin. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Conaway. Yes. McMillan. Yes. Lofman. Yes. Ivancho. Yes. Mr. Leonard. Motion to pass. <laughs> I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call. Conaway. Yes. Marlin. Yes. McMillan. Yes. Ivancho. Yes. Leonard. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Lofman. Yes. And that order is declared adopted. 
Next one, please. An ordinance of transfers and appropriations. Uh, Ms. McMillan. Motion to suspend. Mr. Lawson. Second to suspend. Roll call on the suspension. Conaway? Yes. Marlin? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Ivancho? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Lothman? Yes. Mr. Conaway? Motion to pass. Mr. Uh, Wolverton? Second to pass. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ivancho? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Lothman? Yes. Conaway? Yes. Marlin? Yes. And that ordinance is declared adopted. Next, please. An ordinance authorizing the fire department to apply for a state of Ohio 2019 EMS grant. Motion to suspend. Mr. Wolverton. Second the motion. We'll call on the suspension, please. Conaway. Yes. Marlin. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Lothman. Yes. Leonard. Yes. McMillan. Yes. Evancho. Yes. Marlin. Motion to pass. Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Ivancho, yes. McMillan, yes. Leonard, yes. Lothman, yes. Wolverton, yes. Marlin, yes. Conaway. Yes. And that ordinance is declared adopted. Next, please. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Cambridge City Band. Uh, Mr. Motion to suspend. Mr. Marlin. I second that motion. Conaway, yes. Marlin, yes. McMillan, yes. Avancho, yes. Leonard, yes. Wolverton, yes. Lothman. Yes. Mr. Conaway. Motion to pass. Mr. Leonard. Second. Uh, <coughs> Avancho, yes. McMillan, yes. Leonard, yes. Wolverton, yes. Lothman, yes. Conaway, yes. Marlin. Yes. That ordinance is the great job. On to miscellaneous, Mr. Mancho. Finance Committee will meet next Monday, tax day, April 15th at 4.30. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Come early, get a parking place. <laughs> uh, yeah, community in the hall will be at 5, or excuse me, 4.45 or immediately follow. Won't be 4.45. Probably 45. Probably 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 4.45 or uh, immediately follow. Um, it's uh, Councilman Conway's last, uh, last meeting with us. Uh, for those that don't know, he bought a home outside the city limits and for that reason has to give up his seat. Um, but we didn't want to let it go without at least mentioning it. And, uh, you know, Brian's been a good addition to the, to the council. It's been nice having some uh, youth injected into uh, into our proceedings. So the rest of us are old, yeah. right? Speak for yourself. Uh, are a little older than we look. I'm glad I didn't say that, no. <laughs> but it's, it's nice having uh, you know, the next generation of uh, youth come up in, into our community and, and uh, give service like, like Brian has. I know this probably won't be the last, even though he's moving outside the city limits, it won't be the last time we hear from him, I'm sure. Uh, but in recognition, of your service. We uh, have a little plaque here. It says, uh, presented to Brian Conway, City of Cambridge Council, thanks you for your uh, service to the residents uh, and our, it's fancy writing, I can't read uh, <laughs> our community as a councilman at large from January 1st, 2016 to April 18th, 2019. So thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Miss you, but we're going to miss Jack even more. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Jack. Jack. Hope to see you again, but not in court. <laughs> uh, is there anything else under Miss Lane? Um, Seeing nothing. Uh, oh, Mr. Leonard. Do we need to do a legislative on that uh, pre annexation? That's, a, that's included in the uh, orders of the mayor. There's a pre annexation in the no, city no, engineer report. It'll, it'll go to finance. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Uh, anything else? Mr. Marlin, I will, uh, if you don't mind, refer to uh, Mr. Conway. <laughs> Make a motion, we adjourn. We are adjourned.